Hello everyone, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist. Today we are painting a super cute barn and we really like to make all the paintings super easy and fun for y'all. And so we have traceables. And so I've worked ahead a little bit to show you what that will look like. This is how you would start. But we have this wonderful traceable and transfer paper that comes with our painting kit. And our painting kit comes with everything that you need. So you don't have to shop for it and get confused. We have it all figured out for you. And when you do the transfer, it will start and look like this. So again, very fun, very easy. And we're going to go ahead and get started teaching you how to paint this right now. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and change camera views now and so here we go usb all right wonderful wonderful all right so here we are all right so we've got our little brushes here and this is my little brush kit that comes with every single kit we sell so this is my mama brush uh, this is my little buddy brush and then this is my little bit brush then we've got some napkins You'll have new napkins. Mine are a little bit used. Um, all right, so there's your little family paints. Of course, your paints will look like this, but brand new. And then, of course, um, the water, bucket of water, have all that out. So this is pretty much what your table should look like with the setup. So paints nearby, a little plate, napkins, brushes, and water. And then, of course, your canvas. And then the transfer process, again, I did work ahead on this, um, but you can... Follow the link. I have a link that shows you how to do that with the um, transfer paper and our traceable. And again, it looks like this. Now, one other step you can do, we also include a permanent marker with the kit. So you can either leave it like this for a softer look, or you can use our permanent marker to do a hard line over all of this, which I think, I mean, I personally love it. And I think it's easier to do because then even if you have a little bit of a sloppy overpaint, then it maintains your trace and that bleeds through a little bit. So beginners typically think this is pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and work this in. A little heart here. And then you can use a ruler for this, but the other thing you can do is our paint kit here. It's got the flat line. You can actually position this right up next to that edge. And so that can also create a nice straight line. In case you can't find a ruler, so that makes that awesome. And then these little lines, of course, the they're on the trace before you, but they've got, they're not supposed to be perfect. A little bit more of that worn down path and road. Right line here. And then I'm not going to do all of the tree, but this bottom section, since it will be very dark, it'll actually be helpful to go ahead and use our permanent marker here too. All right, so that provides just enough of the framework of the tree and the big iconic shapes of the design. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this off to the side. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and get started with our background. Okay, so here with our paints, let's go ahead and start with some primary cyan blue. I'll do a little pea size amount of that. And then I have some titanium white already started on my plate and then also some Mars black. All right, so I'm gonna take my mama brush and since yours is brand new, what I usually recommend is placing it into the water then go ahead and dry it off a little bit so it's just moist and also it's nice and flexible, ready to use. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a nice big dollop of this titanium white. We're gonna place this off to the side here and then we're gonna pick up a tiny little touch of that primary cyan blue. We're gonna mix these two together this will give us a really pretty 
light blue here. You can make it even lighter if you want. You can also have a little bit of a slate look in the sky. That's up to you, but I'm going to give you a little detail of that. So tiny little touch of the black and see how that brings in a little bit of gray quality to the sky. So some people like that slate look too. So that's a little bit of an option. I'm going to go ahead and go back to some of this just blue and white. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of push this into the sky here, crisscross the brush back and forth. I'm also going to alternate with touches of white to add a little bit of that cloud cover happening in the sky. Now I'm going to switch how I hold the brush. So here I was holding it more parallel to the canvas that was filling in a larger section of the sky. Now I'm going to do a line edge cut in. So I'm going to hold it more like a pencil. This will make a nice thin line that goes over the top of the barn. Now I'm going to continue on with filling it into the background. So I'm going to go ahead and can kind of crisscross. Kind of feels like you make little tiny letter X's over and over again. Lots of repetition, little touches of white that I'll alternate in with the blue. Again, just kind of crisscross back and forth. Now I'm going to add a little bit of water to that paint to kind of thin it out, make it a bit more translucent. We're going to do a slight overpaint over this tree in here, but we want the sky to be peeking through the tree completely so that you can do the leaves over the top. Excuse me for just a minute. I'm going to close out my mail so that it doesn't continue to Ding, while I'm painting. All right, so line edge here. And by the way, that's my sweet puppy dog in the background. She likes to shake and wiggle and move her collar. It has little jingles on it, so she can, she jingles in the background a little bit. All right, so continuing on with our blue. So again, I had a little bit of water mixed in with this. This is that blue we mixed up in the beginning, a little bit of water, it made it a bit more translucent. And you can see anything that is with the Sharpie will just bleed through. And in fact, the more it continues to dry, the more it will kind of pop out. That's a good thing. You'll be able to find it all again uh, so that you can paint over, over this later. And then what's also lovely about this is that that sky will be peeking through any negative space that occurs behind the tree. So that's a really good thing as well. And you can continue to touch into little sections of the white, just kind of crisscross those in, just kind of back and forth. All right, very nice. Let's go ahead and rinse out our brush here. Firm pressure, round and round and round. And then we'll go ahead and dry off. All right, now we're going to go ahead and do the rooftop here. I'm going to rotate the paint to where we're dealing mostly with white and black. So I'm going to take my little buddy brush. We're going to pick up a nice big dollop of the white, little tiny touch of the black. We're going to mix these two together. I want some of this to be more of that darker charcoal gray. I'll have lighter sections of gray here. A little bit of both. All right, so firm press into that paint. Now we have plenty of that to play with. And I'm going to do a firm press into the charcoal gray, and we're going to make a nice little line edge here on the top section of the roof. And this is, again, the darkest charcoal gray. So I'm picking up a little bit more black with this making a nice thin line. So holding the brush, just like you would hold a pencil and you can see the edge of the brush is nice and thin. So that can make that nice thin line edge. So we're gonna go ahead and just work on doing all of this line work here for the roof. And then here, And then I'll 
also here, all the way down. And add a little bit of water to it too so that the paint becomes very fluid, flows into the porous parts of the canvas. Especially if you notice that it's looking a little bit like a dry brush effect. See how this is, we call that more of a dry brush effect right in there. So adding a little bit of water to the paint can help that paint really flow into that. All right, so we have all of the line work done. All right, now we're going to continue pushing into that dark charcoal color and I'm gonna do light pulls from the top of the roof. Right, this shadow here, that look of old weathered wood. And then let's start from this line, pull up. Now let's go ahead and touch into that pure white. And we're gonna pull that in. A little line across. And then we'll make this line here. And we can come back into the charcoal, do another line over the top. Light, light drags down in a diagonal downward stroke. Pick up a little bit more white and then work that into that little section there. And then we'll finish off with a dark charcoal. We'll firm up that. And I picked up a little bit more black this time. Just went right into the pure black and I'm gonna go ahead and go over this one more time here. And I pushed into more pure black this time as well and I'm gonna firm up this line going down and then also this line going across. All right, lovely, let's go ahead and rinse out. So now I'm going to go back with our mama brush here and I'm just going to do a light little touch into the black, just pure black on this. And I'm going to start by just going underneath the roof here. And again, this is just pure black. And then I'm gonna do slight little pulls down and we definitely want this to be dry brushed. So just a little bit of black on the brush. We're just getting some nice light texture happening here. So just a very little amount of black here. And I'm gonna start from the base and just kind of pull up. Tiny touches into that black. Just barely tap into it. And I want heavier concentrations of it to be at the top of the of where the roof ends here. And just kind of pull down from there. And if you're nervous about getting too much of this onto the canvas to where it's not dry brushed enough, you can always wipe it on your napkin to begin with too, to make sure that it is a light touch of black. Because again, you definitely, you don't want to just paint black on here. You want it to be dry brushed. So I can kind of remove the excess. And just pull that down.
So again, just dry brush on. And this is all gonna be pure black in here anyway, so it won't really matter a whole lot. All right, so that's a great start. And then you can do, you know, just kind of random heavier concentrations of the black. Coming up here and there, but again, always kind of dry brush with a lot of that canvas showing through. All right, the next up to get a cool red, I'm going to take, I'm going to place this off into the water here. I've got some red off to the side, but I'll show you the mix here. So this is going to be equal parts of our cadmium red and our primary magenta. So when those two are mixed together, they make a cool red. And that's what we're going to use for our barn here. So I've rinsed off the mama brush. Now I'm gonna go back into that cool red now. And I'm gonna go ahead and just paint right over the top here. So this gives me like a crimson color but it also looks like it's very old and weathered. And we're just going to do nice vertical strokes, just up and down. And we're just going to fill in the whole front side of this barn. So just get a nice layer of that red paint on one flat side. And just pull that up and down here. And that lovely black underneath has already done the work. And even if you completely cover up that heart, it's not a big deal. That's a pretty easy thing to recreate again. Because mine is becoming quite a bit obscured, but that's okay. I'll teach you how to realign that. I mean, just underneath that root and then pulling down and then again, starting from the base and then pulling it. And you can see how fully red it is becoming again over the top of the surface area, but we still see a lot of that black doing its magic underneath and making it look very distressed and old and again a little bit more crimson than just pure red. And my honey bear is saying hello to me. He has some, he's going to go to Walmart. It's, very, it's a very exciting day here, you tipsy artist. <laughs> We're going to Wally World. <laughs> Laundry and Wally World and cleaning bed and breakfast. And That's our glamorous life. <laughs> All right, so that's looking awesome. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, are you still here? Okay, I love you. Be safe. Loving kisses. I'm not, my face isn't on, so you can come back, you can come over here and give me a kiss. I know. Thank you. Love you, sweet pie. Mm -hmm. All right. So now let's go ahead and fill in the black here on our barn. 
All right, so I've rinsed out Mama Brush. I'm gonna go ahead and go back into that pure black here. And I'm gonna fill this in. And just solid black and just fill all this in. How lovely is that? So lovely. I'm going to switch my earbuds out. I think I put them in the wrong ears and they're falling out. Okay. I am back with the program. Okay. So we've got that section done. Now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. This is my little buddy brush and just pure black. And we're going to go ahead and go into those little windows here. I'm having to kind of pick this up to see my trace. The light was hitting on it in an interesting way, kind of obscuring it, but there it is. There's my little window. But my trace did hold up underneath all this red and black. I was able to see that and just paint right into it. So that's awesome. That's what we want. Beautiful. Okay, so let's rinse out these brushes and dry off. Let's get Mama back out. Rinse out. Dry off. Wonderful. Good job. Okay, so now let's go ahead and switch over to some lovely green grass. All right, so we're going to be using some cadmium green. And let's do a little bit of some bright yellow green. Maybe. I'll try to use up all my paint. You will find that with these paint kits, there's a lot of leftover paint. So you can definitely get a lot more use than just one painting. So, all right. Okay, so we've got our cadmium green, our bright yellow green. And let's go ahead and mix those together. I can also use a touch of white in here too. And mix those two together. And then we're going to place this into the sides here. I want to subdue this a little bit. So I'm going to do some cadmium yellow in here. Make it a little bit more golden, and then let's add a little bit of white. Because that was kind of, whoo, that's super bright. So yeah, that cadmium yellow helped a lot. We needed to kind of dull that all, but I'm going to add a little bit more white to it. You can also add a little bit of gray to it too. That'll make it a little bit more sage. Yeah, I'm liking that a little bit better. And just nice horizontal strokes going across here. I did have to do a little cut-in work here where I held the brush more like a pencil and did a thin line edge.
So doing a little cutting work around that tree and then continuing back in with nice horizontal strokes side to side here. And then we're going to continue this on up into this little side part here with this grass coming up. Cut in around the tree, and now we're going to cut in around this barn. I'm going to do a little touch into the black while that green still on there. And I'm going to do just a tiny little horizon line just right across here. That'll meet where that tree is. And then a darker green in with the black. More of that charcoal gray, really. So charcoal gray and the darker green. And we're going to kind of work that into this little section here for a darker section of like bushes in the background. So we're going to pick up a little bit more of that darker green mixed with that charcoal, doing little tiny pushes back and forth, side to side, and we'll have those start where that little dark charcoal gray horizon line is. Let's do little pushes back and forth. Now I'm going to do a little crisscross action to give it a little bit of texture. And there that is in the background. I'm going to go ahead and scrape off the excess of that paint in case we need that a little bit later on. And then I'm going to rinse out. Now we need to mix up some black. Or not black. Oopsie. Brown. Okay. <laughs> I will. I will get my words together. Okay, so brown. So we're going to be using some cadmium orange. A little pea size amount there. And then we have our Mars black, so it's going to take both of those together. So I've got my little buddy brush. Let's grab a little touch of this black. We're going to mix with our cadmium orange, and this is going to make brown. All right, that's really pretty. And you can add a little bit of white to it too to make a lighter brown. So we'll use some of that too. And I'm gonna grab some more of that cadmium yellow. And mix that in and warm up that light brown. We're gonna use this in our path. Get a little bit more white. Add some white. Let's grab a little bit of water. Bit of white. So this was that brown we mixed up, a little bit of white, a little bit of cadmium yellow. Really nice. Okay, now I want to use the darker part of that brown. I'm just going to kind of squeegee off the excess there. Put that into this darker brown. Got a little bit more black if you need to make it even darker than that. Now we're going to go ahead and go into this tree. Follow it. Line that out there. Fill this in. And then as you pull out for those little branches, we just want to lift off with a light hand. So we do the thickest part of the branch. Okay. 
you know, towards the center where the, the growth is. And then as we pull away from the tree, then we lift up with pressure and then lift off with a light hand. So always start where the growth is, which would be the center of the tree and make your thickest strokes there, which is more pressure on the brush. And then as you get farther away from the center, then you'll lift off with more pressure or lift, I'm sorry, alleviate pressure. So lift off and light hand and then just lift off, light hand. And that's how those little branches get thinner and thinner. You can also switch brushes. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out. Let's switch out to a little bit. I'm gonna do a little twirl here. Twirl into that paint. So this will give me a nice fine point. a little bit of water, whirl it back out. We're doing that nice little framework of the tree, getting all the branches in place. And we'll just do little tiny baby branches. And so they kind of feel like you make like little Y's or little V's. And you're gonna end up obscuring a lot of this anyway with all the leaf patterns that come in. But it does help to have this little framework in place to begin with. So that's a great start. Let's go ahead and rinse out. And now we're gonna go ahead and work on some of those beautiful little leaves. Okay, so let's turn our plate back to this direction. And let's talk about the mix here again, in case you need to mix up a little bit more. So, let's grab more green. This is our cadmium green. And then more cadmium yellow. And I might even want some viridian. This is really pretty too. It's, it's dark, but it's a nice little detail to add in. Looks a little bit more like teal. You can come back in with a bit more bright yellow green too if you'd like. I still have quite a bit on my plate here. So the nice mixes here are going to be, you know, coming in with a lot more white. Um, also that cadmium yellow warms it up quite a bit and subdues it and even more white. I'll tell you what else is nice is sometimes little hints of the black can be nice in there, make it a bit more sage. Also, some of that brown, you can go back and pick up some of that brown and mix that in too with that green. All right, so let's add some water. Using the little bit, I'll move this up just a tad there. Got some room to work here, this close to my plate. All right. So little bit, and then I'm going to start to make what looks like little tiny, like a parentheses, parentheses. I'll dry off a little bit, have a little bit too much water. And I'm going to be dipping into various shades of this green. So just tiny little parentheses, parentheses, just kind of fill that in. And go into some of this darker green and a few of those and many times it's just a simple little swish of the brush does the work for you just as soon as you touch on the canvas 
And you're going to be wondering maybe why you did all those branches because you're just about to cover all of them up, but that's okay. I promise they kind of help visually. And so again, just little squishes and I constantly kind of change where I kind of touch into the color because I love little differences. So like I touched into more of the cadmium yellow that time, just pure cadmium yellow. Next, a little bit of that viridian, maybe a little bit of just pure white and the green still on the brush. Little tiny, again, it feels like little parentheses, 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 just back and forth. And lots of texture on the canvas. And we'll just continue this all over. And don't be afraid to really load up that brush with lots of color. I'm also going to pick up some just Pure white, that little white highlight is really nice too. So, and I'll leave a little bit of peekaboo branches happening. You don't want to completely cover up everything. But again, just lots of little petals or leaves. It's really nice. That looks awesome. And some of that cadmium yellow is really kind of nice, just to kind of play with that in a pure state. Again, little parentheses, parentheses. That's what it feels like. All right, um, so now we're gonna have some playful time working on a little bit more grass and texture in the base here. So I'm gonna do a harder twirl with my brush because I need this to be thinned out. And I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of this viridian that's what we had here. And I'm just going to pull straight up. I do little bits of grass here. And add a little bit of black to this too, so it's got a little bit more of a shadow. Add a little bit of water to thin that out. Do my twirl into the paint. It's a nice thin angle there. Again, pull straight up and then to a diagonal and then out to each side. And we're gonna just add little sprigs of this kind of all over. Light pulls up.
All right, so it's looking like we perhaps need to pull the weeds or mow. I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe it's good. You know, it's out in the country. All right. Rinse out. And then I'm going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, boy, I need some water right there. All right, now I'm gonna do little taps of white here for little white flowers, still using a little bit of brush. Tap, 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 create that little bit of texture. And it's like a little bit of this little flower that's happening here. So little tinier taps, but almost like little dots more. So it looks like little tiny flowers or kind of little wild flowers. Little tiny touches there. And let's go into that red. And that's gonna softly mix with that white, go a little bit pink. Just look like little tiny flowers. A few over here. Start with the white and then little tiny touches of the red. You can have a few little flowers that I'm gonna make some kind of come up over the top here. And it's just little tiny taps of the white and then that little touch of the red over the top. Brings in a hint of that pink. All right, very, very pretty. Rinse out here. I'm gonna do just, I'm gonna do tiny little sweeps of this brown that's going to kind of go here in the background so it's not just a big blocky amount of green in the back the touches of white just kind of lightly take those across I kind of went over my tree a bit so I'm going to come back in with brown kind of firm that back up Different shades of green, just kind of sweep those gently back and forth through here. Just add a little variety. I did some texture.
kind of doing little taps of different shades of green now over that other background green. Just add a little bit of texture. I dried off my little bit brush, went into a little bit more of that brown. I'm going to firm back up this tree here, that over the top. All right, so now little details here. I'm going to use my little bit brush and just barely touch into the white. And we're going to do just like a little tiny, tiny line right around the little windows here. Just kind of barely drag it across. It's not supposed to be real perfect. Touch of white. We can do that here on the other side. And then grab a little bit of that pan from the top that was what we mixed up earlier, and a little bit of white with that. We're going to do a tiny little line right around the edge here. Light, light hand. All right, looks good. And we'll put more of that here at the base. Light drag. Cross here. And then I'm going to take a little bit more of that really light brown that we mixed up earlier, and a little bit of that white, and I'm just going to tap over the road here that kind of leads up to this. Just a little bit of texture. A little bit more white and just tap, tap, tap. Actually, come in with a little bit of that brown. Just tap that in. Add a little bit of variety there. And then here again on this side. Tap, tap, tap. All right, beautiful. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and work on that really cute little heart up in the top of the barn. 
So we're going to mix up that light gray. So I've got my white still, titanium white, a little bit of the black. And the first thing I want to do is, and I can still barely see my little heart here. See, I told you it would blend. Not blend, but bleed through. I'm going to go ahead and follow it. I can still see it. I've got the little tail here. So it's a little bit of a cross hatching on this. It's done, so I'm going to twirl out the brush here. Nice fine point. And I'm just going to like crisscross back and forth, like little tiny X's over the top here. Give it a little bit of texture. a little bit more black and twirl into that black and just work that into that texture again And then we're going to reinforce this little tail here of the arrow. Coming back in with one more sweep of that gray right over the top and then it's time for the initials now a couple fun things you can do we do have our permanent marker so if this part scares you a little bit now the key is you have to be completely dry. So you can just do this with your permanent marker. And for us, I'm going to say here, actually I'm gonna do this for my daughter and her boyfriend. So we're gonna do L of London plus Tommy. I kind of have this dream of having a little bar down in the country. So it's kind of fun, isn't it? I'll test tea. Alright, so that way you can get it firmly in how you want it. And you can just leave it like that, kind of settle. Which I think is kind of nice. Or you can go back over it again with that light, light gray. Just did a teeny little touch there. I'm just going to do one tiny little touch. Lovely. All right. I think we are done here. And of course, just signing your masterpiece. 
Now my paint's still a little bit wet, so I'm gonna hold up on that. But I think ideally it's easiest to use the permanent marker to do your little signature in one of the bottom corners here. It's usually in the bottom right hand corner. And I'll let mine set up and dry. I think mine's still actually actually look pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little sign here. Yeah, you don't want to hit permanent marker on the wet paint or it just kills your permanent marker. So that is the warning there. A little cautionary tale. But other than that, it'll work just great as long as it's on a dry painted surface. It works beautifully and it's a nice way to do a little detail, some finishing touches. All right, so we are done with our beautiful painting, our love barn out in the country. And we just want to thank y'all so very much for painting with us today. We had a blast. And again, all the supplies that you need for this painting kit are on our website at tipsyartist.com. And again, we'll have details in the description about how to find the traceable that, that goes with this and also the direct link to find this particular design. So, yay, we did it. Good job, y'all. Thank you again so very much. And we'll see you soon. Much love to y'all. Toodles.